now is more um, a short lecture, as I, as I announced before, of how um, an understanding of what is really happening physically when you listen to something, I believe, uh, is enlightening in, in the artistic experience. The first thing you want to understand if you want to understand music is oscillations. <laughs> or I guess sound, generally, right? So this is a little pendulum. We're all used to that, right? So the only thing I want to show you here is that if you, if you grab this pendulum and you throw it from a farther distance, right? Look at the period that is being formed between each oscillation. Or if you do the same thing in the hand, it's pendulum. <laughs> so the amplitude is smaller, but the period is the same, essentially. Right. So what I want to convey with that is that the, the characteristics of the oscillation are often not so much uh, determined by how you start the motion, but more by the physical properties of the system. And in particular, if I change the length of this system, you see that there the period would clearly change. Similarly, if I change the gravity of the system, the period, the period will change. But the important part is that there's something intrinsic about vibrations and oscillations of systems that are not necessarily determined by the initial condition. So if you put a bunch of these oscillating things, so here what you would have to do is to grab a bunch of pendulums in a, in a string, say. All right, so you imagine that I'm looking at this from below and they're oscillating, right? But then what happens is that because they are on a string or something that, that when this one is oscillating and influences the other one a little bit, right? There are a little couple of things. So as soon as you're doing an oscillation on this one, the oscillation will propagate, right? So that's just the wave. In this wave, there's a propagation, but it's going to the right, but the actual spheres are not advancing in that direction. So to show you that, you can go a little further and look at this, this case. So this is exactly the same that we had before, okay? With the difference that now it's just on a graph. So now we have a bunch of oscillations. Because of the coupling of the oscillations, this produced a wave. What I want to show you here is that in this case, there's a motion of each agent, of each particle, sorry, that's moving up and down with a certain amplitude, but that motion is not even the direction of propagation of the wave, right? It's perpendicular. The direction of propagation of the wave, you see it traced by this little arrow, so if you follow it, you can see how the thing is moving. So, if you step a little bit to the more um, conceptual side, there's something about sound, and about waves in general, that it's not that you're moving things, you're moving information, right? You're moving it, it's a vibration that is being communicated to the next one next to you, and through that, there's information that's being moved. And I think there's something nice about that that I'm going to try to uh, recapture as I explain more things because there's something very um, essential about sound. Okay, the other thing that I want to show you here is that this is a transversal wave. So the oscillation is perpendicular to the direction of motion of the wave. This longitudinal the wave. So it's exactly the same concept. Uh, but now the, the oscillation is in the direction of motion. But again, it's not like this particle is going further. It's just oscillating around a little point. And then this density here is the one that is, is advancing. You can really follow the wave this way. So it's just a different kind of wave, but it's exactly the same principle. And that's important because the sound wave is actually uh, more like the second wave. Like so, so the other thing I wanted to show you is now the um, what happens when you have a fixed boundary. Okay, so what I showed you before was just a propagating wave and it went out of the screen and that was it, right? So that's a little bit like if I'm speaking, the sound waves are propagating towards the end of the room and they get dissipated at some point and that's it. But if there's a boundary somewhere where there's a reflection, like in this case, the boundary at the right here, what happens is that when this wave gets to the end, it's reflected back, as you can see, like this little phantom there that's coming back. Okay. And if you keep on feeding the same wave and it reflects back again, what happens is they generate a standing wave. Actually, the sum of these two waves is exactly the standing wave, which is the, what, the main wave that we're seeing there. And what you see that is a standing wave is a point where, it's a, it's a situation where uh, there's some nodes, there's some points that don't move, and there's a lot, some parts that move a lot. Right? So that's basically the same thing that I was showing before, but with boundary conditions to constraint. So with that, we can go directly to a guitar. All right. So when you plug a string of a guitar, what's going to happen is that the wave is going to propagate throughout your string, right? But very quickly, this thing is going to end up finding the, the, the simplest way of, of oscillation of this string. 
so in particular here, it will be the fundamental. So the fundamental is just this oscillation like that. Constrained again by the boundary conditions. <coughs> then you have the second harmonic, which is this one. You know, there's a note here in the middle, where it doesn't move. Here is the third harmonic with two notes, and the fourth harmonic. Right? So that's the basic concept of a vibrating string, which is behind the basic concept of any instrument that you make, or any generating object. So here I'm grabbing another example. In the case of a vibrant string, you could think that the string actually, when it moves, it actually literally kicks molecules of air, right? And these molecules of air will like, compress and, and make like shock wave that bends, right? So that's what is happening here, but now instead of having an instrument, I'm using a speaker. So in the case of a speaker, what you have is a change in tension here, and that through an electromagnetic mechanism will make the little cone vibrate. And this is just reproducing the same motion of air that the source surge originally produced. Right? And when that happens, what I want you to see here is that this is just a longitudinal wave, like the ones I showed you before. Right? What happens is that there's higher pressure of air here, and again, this little, this little uh, air molecule here is just oscillating back and forth, but there's this little pressure wave that is advanced. And that's what sound is, it's just the pressure wave. And if you think about it, if you go to lower frequencies, what that means is that the, the displacements are, are larger. Right? So lower notes, it's basically larger, and they get to the point where you can feel them, or you can see them on the speaker. I'm sure many, many of you have at some point you kind of felt it or concert or something, right? And uh, if you go to higher frequencies, it's just very small displacements, and maybe you can also feel it in a different way, but you can definitely hear it. So similarly, if you go to the other side, um, what is a microphone? A microphone does the same thing. Now there's these oscillations of, of, of air. Right, that changes in pressure want to be detected by something that literally is being kicked by the by the molecules, and then at some point there's higher pressure is getting kicked more. So therefore, this thing is vibrating as a response of the waves that are coming in, the sound waves that are coming in. Again, through an electromagnetic procedure in a dynamic microphone, the typical thing is a magnet with a coil. You produce a tension difference, and then becomes the information of the sound being stored, being transmitted, etc. This other type of microphone I just mentioned very quickly, what is the condenser microphone? Where you just have a condenser is based on the fact that the tension between two charged plates exactly changes with the, with the distance. And small changes in the distance will make a change in the tension, so that's how the condenser microphone works. And finally, there's the piezoelectric microphone, which is not so common. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit more technical, I guess. And uh, which is based on some materials that actually, when they're deformed, they change, make a difference in, in, in tension. So it's always exactly the same. 